day Lana speaking and I feel like I should just give you some context about this vlog so I actually went on this trip so so long ago now but I just wanted to finally post this vlog this was such a fun time and I have all of this footage so let me just edit it down because there's no time limit on memories guys but yeah it's really old I can't believe like how I used to do my makeup and stuff like that like crazy this was all part of a larger trip to Switzerland I was in Switzerland for a few weeks I went all over Switzerland I feel like I saw so much so what you're seeing in this vlog is really just like a few days of that switzerland trip but anyway enjoy the vlog guys so we just arrived in geneva the united Me. nations is here this is a pretty important place i've got a snack this is apparently super popular in switzerland so i decided to try that but now we're gonna head, head off to the un so let's go to give you a little update on the ragusa croissant the regular chocolate croissant is actually better in my opinion now i'm crossing a tram line which is super scary to me because it feels like a train track just got off the tram we're at the united nations now this is the famous big chair there's so much to see if you want to go to the united nations museum as far as i know it's not open sunday saturday and monday these people that you can see here are all people of the Jewish community that managed to escape World War II. There's an entry right there with guards and things, and it's right at the front. You'll know where you are because you literally only just got here and there's a chair. This is the broken chair right behind you. But just so you know, you can't go in there. You have to go this way, the long way around. You can't go in without a passport or a government issued photo ID card. Just take your passport, otherwise you're not gonna be allowed in. And it's because once you go into the UN, you're not in like Swiss territory anymore. Now you're in like international territory. So it's like going through airport, customs you know all of that stuff all of that passport control stuff so we came instead to the red cross museum which is just across the street they gave us one of these it's just the guide Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I expected more. Swiss side out. Yeah, it's kind of nice. What do you mean kind of nice? It's kind of nice. <laughs> We're very good at cider in England. Views from the Glacier Express. Beautiful Campari Soda, Bloody Mary, Whiskey, Tequila. Right now we're heading into Rhine Gorge, which is also known as the Grand Canyon of Switzerland. But this is a tunnel. <laughs> Good time to start filming. Mm. Okay, here we go. Oh, wait, go away. Yeah, there we go. The Grand Canyon of Switzerland. That is the Rhine River, I just learned. It's actually cool because they give you these earphones which are in a little bit just by your seat and every now and then there'll be a little ping, a little ding dong sound and it'll tell you that there's a piece of information about the area that you're in. So that's how I learned that that's the Rhine Canyon, the Rhine Gorge. It's pretty cool. How long did it take you to do that? You can do it again in like 10 minutes. Oh, okay. I took you like two hours. No. It was really neat when I first did it, but um, obviously I've had it in for a few days. This is 
the Glacier Express. You can see it right there, it says Glacier Express. We were lucky because it snowed when? Yesterday. So we have all this picturesque winter landscape. You can't, like, you can literally just see a white blanket of snow behind me. But we've seen mountains, bridges, rivers, gorges, everything. And the journey that we're taking is the one from Kwa down to Zermatt. You can also take it all the way from Zermatt to Summeritz which is, I think is the longest journey. I think it starts at somewhere and goes to Zermatt. Somewhere around halfway you'll get to Kwa. So we got on at Kwa and we're taking it down to Zermatt. This is about to be the highest point in the journey. Oh man. <laughs> yes, I am. Let this be a lesson to everyone. Bring sunglasses with you. In winter. In snows. winter and if it snows and if the sun is about to be reflecting of the snowy mountain then you're definitely gonna want sunglasses look at this kid can't even hear you i'm so blind i can't hear you <laughs> oh my gosh are your eyes watering Yeah, it froze. It's not like soft. What up? What up? <laughs> I have hey. no sunglasses. I have no sunglasses. Lunch time. Yeah, it's just like a little Oh, look, now we're going up. Hello, pony. You kind of see that coming. Oh, yeah. Down from that side of the it definitely looks like a landslide. We finally made it to Zermatt after like a six hour journey. This is where you first come out and the first thing you notice is that there are no cars in Zermatt, only like these electric buggy kind of things. There's quite a lot of them but I guess it's because we're right at the train station. Apart from that, no cars Nothing. at all. We found one car! It's the police. They get to have a car. The police can have a car. Hi guys, it's Friday and the weather finally cleared up. It snowed, which means that we can go skiing. So we just traveled for three hours back to Lauterbrunnen. We even saw the Airbnb that we stayed at the first time. Yeah, we just went up in the cable car. We're heading up to Murren where the ski slopes are. And now we have to take the little train that goes up. We have all of our stuff. So this is our skis that Cedric's dad adjusted for me. I've got some boots over there. Helmet, goggles. Buck in love. Take us to the snow. So we made it to uh, Murren. I'm putting my boots on now. Well, first of all, all the bits need to be undone. Like all of these. Get that off. And then shove your foot in. Ugh. Well, that's that's not tight enough. You have to tighten this more. It's not tight enough, so then I can do more. It has to be tight. If it starts tingling, that means it's too tight. You have to put these on. Oh, that looks like a kid's slope. Is that where I'm going? Can I ski school? Oh, a ski school that I'm not doing. See how slow they're going? Okay, let's go. Triangle, yeah. Oh, that was great, Lana. <laughs> triangle, triangle. <laughs> go. Yeah, you got it. You got it, Lana. Perfect. 
Look, it's not that bad now. I can't see. Yeah, I was like, I can't see. Yeah, but you can see perfectly <laughs> fine. Yeah, I can. I can now. I didn't want to put the goggles on because I was scared on the slopes. I fell down about a hundred thousand times. How many times? Like, actually. Times, maybe. I fell all kinds of ways. I fell on my ass. I fell on my face. I fell sideways. I fell and tumbled. I fell in like just every kind of fall. Well, it's normal. And a lot it's your more. First time. Yeah, a lot more falls to come. But. I did manage to turn once <laughs> without twice. falling. I managed to turn twice apparently. One of them was to avoid crashing directly into Cedric. So I guess, I mean, it's still a turn, but I was yeah. I catch you. Oh, am I scared? Why are my hands shaking? I only just realized because I'm holding the camera and it's like wobbling. I think I'm still a bit scared. <laughs> Because I was actually really scared at the top, so I was getting a bit irritable and scared, and I didn't want to go down the first bit. And I did fall down the first bit, but I think I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, yeah. we don't have a choice. <laughs> no, like you fall down, and it's just soft snow. You might roll over a couple of times. <laughs> I'm still in one piece, so uh, you're not even hurt. It doesn't. I'm even not. Hurt. I'm literally not hurt. Not not a scratch or anything. So message to future Lana, you can do anything. <laughs> you can go down even when you're scared and you're gonna wanna go down again. You live and you learn. <laughs> so that little red blob over there is Cedric. I felt bad for making him go down slowly when he's obviously a lot better than me and he can go a lot quicker than me. So, I mean, that, that was really quick. It's taken me like, I don't know, like half an hour to get that far. I barely wore any makeup at all today, guys, because I knew I was gonna be sweating and gross. But what is this? Excuse me, waterproof mascara wear? What? That's literally the only thing I've got in my eyes. Cedric's coming up. I can't believe this. In the time that it's taken me to eat half a banana, Cedric has already made it back to the top. He's finished sloping down here. He's gone all the way back up and he's probably gonna turn up in a second. And I still haven't finished this blimmin' banana. That's how quick this slope could be if you didn't keep falling flat on your face every 10 seconds, like me. Oh, look! <laughs> What's up? Cedric's dead. Oh, there's like steam coming off you. Oh, you can see the literal steam. Boy, it's smoking. Get off. Oh, taken a long break. I've taken about a half hour break. I'm feeling a lot more energized. Triangle bigger. Yeah. Okay, well, that was the last time that I'm gonna go down because Cedric says that I'm starting to skip steps. So I wanted to kind of conquer my fear and I was like reciting like I can do anything. And I've been watching this K-drama lately where the main character, her name is Kang Joon and she always says, Nana, Kang Joon, I can do anything. As it means I am Kang Joon, I can do anything. So I tried to apply that to myself and actually it helped me. It helped me face my fears, but it gave me this kind of like mentality like, just do it, just get it over with, just do it. Which was not really the best technique because I, by doing that, I was kind of forgetting some of the techniques that Cedric was trying to teach me, like the braking techniques. I was just like, nope, just go, just go. And I was getting really fast. And that last fall that I had was probably one of the worst falls. Like it still didn't hurt, I still didn't get injured. But Cedric said, imagine if you were like on the edge or something. Imagine if you were heading towards, because well, this building basically. Imagine if you're heading towards this building because you can like, you can ski up there and if you come around the other side, you could ski into like the fence. It was like, imagine if you were skiing into this fence, you literally slid 20 feet down because you were going too fast and you didn't know how to control yourself. So I think that's where I'm gonna call it a day because I've reached a point where everything that I'm learning is sort of like going in one ear and out of the other. I've sort of like reached capacity on what I can be taught today. Yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it today but Cedric's still going to be fair we don't have much time left and it takes a long time I like this Cedric <laughs> Cedric wants to do a bigger slope a harder slope but you can't do it so it's fine 
Yeah, we're on the easiest slopes. There's different difficulty levels for the slopes. I've obviously never been skiing before or anything. So we're on the blue slopes, but the blue slopes are Easy. easiest. And what is the black slopes the hardest? Yeah. Hi again, future Lana jumping in. So I want to give you a little bit more context about this ski day. So like I said, I was in Switzerland for a few weeks. So we only actually had one day up on the slopes because it really hadn't snowed up on the mountains. The, my first few weeks there and it was literally on like my last day it snowed and the conditions were good for skiing so we went up we didn't have very much time at all and Cedric decided it would be best if I just skipped the lesson like didn't do any practice just went straight up to the blue slopes so that's what we did but at the time guys I did not realize that there were practice slopes I didn't realize there were lessons like he kind of told me the blue slopes are the easiest so I just ran with it I was like yeah these are the easiest ones coming at you now from the future I would definitely recommend that you take some practice lessons or go on the practice slopes I just want you guys to be safe on the slopes and I want you to have a good time so yeah and all of them are on piece and you can also ski off piece which is like oh, yeah. basically free skiing in the wild because yeah. these ones have been prepared so these ones are safer yeah, yeah the, pack, the snow's pack, been pack, packed yeah. down so that it's easier to ski on they know it's not going to avalanche here or anything like that because they've like it's all been checked and everything if you wanted to you could go and ski up there but you That's might way too it's way dangerous you could cause an avalanche you could get stuck in an avalanche you have to check that your travel insurance includes winter sports because lots of travel insurance doesn't automatically inclu include water sport uh, winter sports so sometimes you have to add that on so if you're going on a skiing holiday, you need to make sure you oh, I'm gonna throw things at me. I'm telling them important information. Yeah, just make sure that your insurance covers winter sports and also it doesn't it usually doesn't cover off piece skiing. Like if you're gonna go and risk your life over there, then the insurance company is gonna be like, so yeah, just little tips for you. <laughs> this is what can happen to you when you go off piece and you don't listen to your instructions, instructors. The helicopter will come and get you. You can see the shadow of the cloud on the mountain. That's so cool. So way up there on that peak, you can see how all the snow is displaced and like just chunky, like it's all come down. It's all down there. Yeah, Where? You oh, there the you water. can see it more because it's in the sun. So all the snow is, it's just not smooth like the rest of the snow. The rest of the snow is like, snowflakes fell and made it all smooth whereas this fell apart dramatically in what looks like an avalanche i think i'm also gonna make a video about my skin when i get back from here because uh this swiss diet has not been good for my skin and i can explain why one more time waiting for cedric to come down then i've got to get into the warm because it's getting cold over here come sedas come sedas my guy Good potatoes? Yeah. Cool. We finished skiing. We took the whole train journey all the way back home again and I didn't vlog any of it because we were just super tired and we had a lot of stuff to carry and everything like that. And now we're doing a super Swiss thing of eating raclettes. But ours is homemade by Cedric. I didn't do anything. But we have potatoes and we have a lot of cheese. Do oh. We can buy pickles. We don't need pickles, it's fine. You can just eat the potato skin as good. I'm so hungry. Shove it in. Shove it in. Just put it right here. Okay, in it under goes. It. Huh? Yeah. I can do it. Oh, you like spread it over the potatoes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll put this here. It's another beautiful day in Switzerland, which means that we can actually go on a little mini plane trip. It was a bit touch and go all week because we were waiting for the weather, it was rainy, it was foggy, it was snowy. And then finally, on my second from last day in Switzerland, the sun came out and we can go on the flight. I'm a bit terrified to be honest, I'm not really thinking about it because if I think about it too much, I'll just get really scared and maybe won't even do it. 
but I have to face my fears. I faced my fears yesterday in skiing and it was worth it, so I'll face my fears again now. We have to stand on the wing to get in. You have the controls? Right there, you can see you have the pedals that move the mm -hmm. what we saw behind on the front wheel. Yeah. This allows you to go down, up, on the sides. Ooh. And here you have the throttles, allows mm. you to put more or less gas. Yeah. This thing here. And this allows you to uh, control uh, how much uh, fuel goes into the engine. Mm. Uh, you can see all the indicators. This is the GPS we use. This is the autopilot and that's the radio. Wow. <laughs> That's so many things to look at. <laughs> so many it's uh, no on the left, still on the left. This one is the airspeed. Altimeter is on the right. On the right, this one, no, yeah. this altimeter. It's like a 25 year old airplane, but you know, they can be very old and still fly. Mm. As you do move the airplane like this, you move it, as you can see in your baby, it's the steering wheel. Oh, yeah. Oops. You put it down, you can see on the airline also when we go to land or uh, to take off, because mm. it allows you to fly a little bit. Uh, yeah. That's the idea. That's the nose. Ah, no flying today. It's too windy, so I'm gonna drag this aircraft that weighs a ton. I'm gonna drag it back into the hangar. I don't think there's room for me up there to hold. You want to go to Paris, for example? Yeah. Something like this. It's a fighter from the First World War. Gosh. It was a German fighter. And as you can see, it's made of uh, tissue. If you touch here, oh yeah, it's a fabric. It's not made out of metal or anything like it. So it's just wood and uh, fabric. Uh, yes, this one if you want to start, you have to do the propeller. <laughs> wow! And, uh, you can see a wooden propeller. That's crazy. That you already the cannon. Wait, there used to be cannons in there. Really? Yeah, this is a fighter jet. Oh. It was uh, used by the Luftwaffe in the uh, First World War, and then it was they used it as a training uh, airplane up until the 80s. Much more simpler than the, the other airplane we have seen. Mm. They have uh, so many stuff. Ça c'est pas d'époque. No, no, no. <laughs> Few indicators and that's all. I like this. Just nose down. Nose up. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't tell you, so, but we didn't fly earlier because the wind was too strong. But we did come up to the tallest building and have a nice view. The town is so cute. Is it? Yeah. I think That's it looks uh, ugly. The fountain of the city. Mm. It's a fountain they inaugurated when, uh, to uh, celebrate the arrival here of uh, running water. Oh, yeah. because wow. Because as you can see, you are in a mountain, so... Uh, Getting running water was quite a big deal back then. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a cute town. All the houses, everything, all the buildings look very <laughs> neat you can and nice. Good. There are quite a lot of uh, churches. Mm. Most of them are Protestant churches mm. because we are in a Protestant area here. Oh. Um, 